I'm joined by author Margie Deeb, who is the author of the book, The Beater's Color Palette. And you know, we're talking a lot about color. We get a lot of questions regarding how to work with color, you know, what things to put together. And I'm so interested in finding out what one of your philosophies is on color. Well, thank you. My latest book, the Beater's Color Palette approaches color differently than mm -hmm. a theory-based or a color wheel. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is helping people, they see something they love, whether mm -hmm. it's a bug or a bird or a landscape or a painting, right. and they want to translate that into a palette they can use and make beautiful jewelry. Right. But it's hard to beater. do. It doesn't come as naturally for everyone. No, it doesn't, and that's mm -hmm. what surprised me. I thought, well, anyone can do it, but proportions is very important, mm -hmm. the hue, the temperature of the color. Mm -hmm. So I've approached it in a, in a real instant gratification kind of way. Because like people that. get yeah, people get very intimidated mm -hmm. by all the color choices that they have and color is just fun. It, it should fun. be absolutely fun and people should use it as much as they can to express themselves. Right. So I'm all about go for it. Go for it. And so that's what this <laughs> book is about. Let me show you what I mean. For example, okay. This beautiful brown striped lionfish, mm -hmm. this photograph that we found is wonderful. But now how do you translate that into a, a necklace or a bracelet? Here's what we've done. We've extracted a palette of two blues and a little bit of white and the chocolate browns and turned it into a lamp bead necklace with mm -hmm. multi strands of seed beads. And see we've echoed the stripes of the fish in the very lamp work bead that we used. So mm -hmm. we're going not just for color but for the texture and the patterns as well. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Let's look at another one. This delightful and very bright, bold palette of colors used in the Indian marketplace here. It's spices mm -hmm. that they've used. That's hot. <laughs> yeah, and we turn that into a loom woven piece I call Twisted Neon. <laughs> We've zoomed in on using the focal color of yellow that mm -hmm. they used on these spices, a little bit of the pink and lots of the red oranges. This I took a lot of liberties with. It's a Guatemalan palette, lots of bright colors, and we've made this bracelet out of it. Now I added more colors than were in the original photograph, mm -hmm. but that's just because you can do anything you want with color. Exactly. Yeah, the sky's you, the limit with that one. This one, we went from using the palette as well as the echoing, of course, the Egyptian mm -hmm. theme in it. Now in Tatankaman's death mask, you'll see a lot more gold than what we used in the necklace, mm -hmm. we chose to focus more on the verdigris green here, the verdigris turquoise. The Egyptians used a lot of glass, faience, mm -hmm. the green and the red, and the blue was lapis. So we echoed that with some lapis, gold, and then colored brass. Mm -hmm. So I changed the palette around a little bit just on what I focused but the you proportions can still on. Feel the theme of it, which oh, is really absolutely. good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Most people see that and they know that's Egyptian right away. Mm -hmm. So this was a direct translation of both style and palette. Exactly. Now speaking of tools, you know, you brought also with you some tools that we can use to help us to find the right color and to pick out the beads that we're going to use. Can we talk about that? Yeah, let me show you mm -hmm. that. All right, this next picture. Mm -hmm. Simple palette, stunning proportions. Look at all the lush shades of yellow green in this. And right in the middle, you've got these sparkling splashes of a sort of a fuchsia, turqu uh, fuchsia pink magenta colors. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I would do first is extract the palette. Now, I've already done that here for you, but the way that I do that, there's a lot of ways, but one of the most fun ways is color chips. Mm -hmm. Go to your hardware store, get a lot of those color chips exactly. from, the, from the paint It's aisle. not just for painting your house. <laughs> no, they're so fun, and so I would pull those and pull and pull and hold them up against the photograph, hold them up against each other, test them out, see how they work together. So then I've extracted a palette, and that's when you also do a lot of testing to see, well, how much of the greens, how much of the mm -hmm. pinks. Now, in this photograph, I usually like to really go all over the place, but this photograph to me is perfect. The mm -hmm. proportions are incredible. Just a little splash of that complimentary exactly. pink. So the piece we're going to make is just going to be a real direct translation. Again, let's use lots of yellow greens, not just one or two as our dominant, but let's stick with the real yellow green. So I laid out all these beads. I'll lay out my beads along with my color chips, mm -hmm. and I'll realize, you know, I want to stick with warm greens. So we would maybe not use something like this. It's not in the palette. No. It's too cool. So we'd pull out some of those, to not use those, let's move those aside and stick with our warm colors. And then let's add texture because this is a very textural photograph. Mm -hmm. The texture is so important in beadwork. So we get rid of our cool greens because we're focusing on warm and let's add larger 
We've got some size eight beads here. Mm -hmm. We've got um, some mostly elevens and then eights, kind of some, but nothing too chunky. Right. I want something cascading and flowing. This is a Singapore rainforest. Mm -hmm. These orchids. So then we want to focus on our pinks, and the pinks in here are quite cool. Right. Uh, they're not. Um, they're not orange. More like a fuchsia. Yeah, very extent. fuchsia. So mm -hmm. let's stay away from the really orange orangey pinks and go to these real pinky ones. Right. And then we want to focus on the most important thing. We've chosen our hues. Now let's look at proportion. There's only about 10% of pink in this mm -hmm. whole palette. And I think that's what makes this so startling. Mm -hmm. If it was half and half, it wouldn't be nearly as fetching right. a palette. So let's stick with those proportions. And let me show you the necklace we came up with yeah. here in the book. The necklace is gorgeous. And you can see how perfect that comes out. Yeah, today. just that one strip of pink down the middle. Mm -hmm. And this is called the cascading tie necklace. I wanted it to look like a waterfall of colors. I think we have time for one more that we're going to show. Let's look at this one. Ooh. Yeah, now this is a very different approach here. It's not one real dominant color. It's sort of a family of muted colors. This mm -hmm. was a Thai wall painting. Mm -hmm. And so what I've chosen here is this family of soft muted colors. And again, I didn't focus on one dominant color like the cascading Thai, which mm -hmm. was the green family, just focused on the soft muted tones. Perfect. And here's just an array of just the different color combinations and beautiful things that you've designed. And I really hope that this has helped, and I, I know it's helped me so much in, in really getting an edge with color and using color as opposed to more traditional styles, which is really yeah, good. Yeah, you can let anything yeah. inspire you, anything mm -hmm. for color. These are beautiful. Thank, well, thank you, you so much, Thank Margie. you, Katina. That was a lot of fun. We'll be right back with Katie Hacker.